Hello everybody. Welcome to competition land. Who's been moving these months closer together? That's what I want to know. Today is the October competition, which was smoke and or steam. The grand total of just 20, 19 entries, this was a fairly small competition by our usual standards. And I wanted to give everybody an honorable mention. So seeing as we've only got the 20 or so to go, I'll just go through all of them. I do have two third place winners, a second place winner, and a winner winner. Uh, so those four won't be included. The others I'm going to go through on a completely random order, uh, just the way I received them, which was not random, actually, come to think of it. It was very specific, but it has nothing to do with place. So these are not in order of merit uh, up until number three, three, two, and one. Do you understand all that? A lot of math, I know, for a Thursday or Friday, whatever it is. But uh, yeah, these were interesting uh, pictures. Smoke and steam was the, uh, or smoke or steam, and or steam. You could do both. Um, and uh, yeah, they're, they're interesting pictures. So I'm going to go through all of them, like I say, in random order. The first person is Robert, who is uh, also known as uh, Macro Everything Around Me, who sent in this picture of incense smoke, which he very cleverly named incense smoke one. And... Um, yeah, you do know you get points for the title, right? <laughs> you do. Because there was a couple there were a couple of titles for photographs in this competition that were absolutely fantastic, real real good uh, choices that do make a difference. So, incense smoke is fairly ordinary as smoke pictures go. It's very nice. It's in good focus. Um, nothing wrong with it at all. But uh, it will have to, it'll have to go hard to uh, uh, to to beat beat out the rest of them. There's nothing very original about it, is what I'm trying to say in the nicest possible way. Because you're a friend, uh, but there you go. That's that's what it is. Now let's turn our attention to incense number two, which is how shall I put this? Um, about the same. About the same is the is the best way. Yeah. Um, actually, it is the same. Oh no, the other one opened up. This is a little bit nicer. Uh, I like the uh, the curl that you caught in the smoke, but I don't like so much uh, the the uh, illumination. It's not uh, it's not quite bright enough. The the framing I think would be more appealing if the column of smoke were more central. Smoke is hard to photograph, but you're going to see in a minute there are some tricks to it that um, that can make quite a difference. Good efforts, well done, um, but you don't get a, a prize today, which is a shame, but there you go. Next up from Leroy Harding. This creature thing is um, smoke and something else. It's also mirrored, so it's a composite. And uh, Leroy owned up to that, which is good, uh, because otherwise you get in trouble. And uh, yeah, this is kind of strange. Um, I saw it as a, as a beet, uh, not a beetle, a jaguar, uh, one of those black cats. But Rick looked at this as well, and he, he thought it looked more like a tiger beetle. So there you go. It, it just takes all kinds. But uh, yeah, this was very interesting, very nice. Uh, only being the third picture I looked at, I thought this one might win for a little bit, uh, but then it uh, then it didn't. I just ruined your day, didn't I? Sorry about that. Anyway, it's nice. The name of it is uh, is good too. It's um, it's invisible. I mean, not the name, the the title. I can't see it. I'll have to. Uh, you can't see what I'm doing, struggling to see these pictures, but. Uh, uh, yeah, Face of Smoke, that was the name of it. More interesting than Incense Smoke 2 or 1, but uh, 
Nonetheless, yeah, it was a nice effort. Good, good job. Peter Hall turned in a nice thing of smoke. This is called, I hate to say it, um, incense smoke. Yeah, it's much nicer a, a, a smoke picture. This one is really what I had in mind more. It lacks a great deal of uh, originality to it, but it does have some interesting folding curves. The way that smoke operates, it usually comes off the subject in sheets and catching those sheets as they fold and roll is what good smoke photography is all about. We've never talked about it, but that's what I look for. It's the really strange layered effects that you can get that's, that makes the pictures uh, uh, what they are. So let's see, that was nice. Peter Hall di didn't win anything, but uh, it was a good picture. Next up, from Alan Lyle. This is a much better smoke picture than the rest so far. I mean, not much better. It's slightly better because of this, this voluptuous double-sided or hollowed out curl. Looks like a violin head or something like that. Very nice, very, um, yeah, better, better be careful with my choice of words, but this, this is nice. I like the, the shapes. It can take a lot of patience to get to the point that uh, you're, you're uh, able to catch this. You have to sit and watch a lot of smoke uh, and you have to be ready. Or you can just fire off your camera every second for an hour. But uh, yeah, it's, it's not easy to do. It's not easy to get this blue color either. Uh, but this is pretty. This looks really good. It looks like cigar smoke. Very nice. Very nice job. But you probably are starting to figure that um, there are some good pictures in here. If that's only getting a nice job, we'll see. Up next, this is an interesting photograph. This one is from Harold Hall. And this one very nearly got in the running. I'll tell you why it didn't in just a second. But here's a match that appears to have just been lit a fire, and there must be a breeze blowing, blowing the flames this away. At first, I thought, oh, the, the flames are oversaturated. But a lot of these chemicals burn with very intense red light, uh, and uh, I think phosphorus does. And um, any, anyway, I believe the color, I believe the color to be fairly real. It doesn't. If anything, it, it, it uh, is, is too real looking, but it's, it's very nice. And I love the hint of a face that it, it's left, like a demonic face, eye socket, eye socket, nose and mouth, kind of kissing the flame. I don't know if that was intentional, but I'm assuming it was, and uh, therefore very well done. The problem is, I don't see any smoke. Now, I know there is smoke, because where there's flame, there's smoke. I read that somewhere, but I don't see it. So it, it would be hard for me to, to, to get too terribly excited about this as a smoke picture. It's a very nice picture and I like it, but there's not enough smoke in it for a smoke competition and there's no steam in it. So it, it, it gets uh, the, the same level of honorable mention as the other entries, but it didn't quite make it to the last four. Nice effort though, nice effort, good idea. Dangerous, I hope you're careful. You know what they say about playing with matches. Next up, I have no idea, was or is Jerry Ludig, who has um, unfortunately named this one Smoke. Um, it, I guess Jerry did not get the memo about you getting points for an interesting name either, but you do. And uh, this is an interesting, um, if very dark, picture. Um, he sent in a corrected version of this, but honestly, I can't see a difference. It looks identical, but uh, it's probably not. But we're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the judging on this one. Well, actually, I'll do them on both. I'll show you the other one as well. This is one of one, so I'm, I'm guessing it was the second one that was uh, meant to be the corrected one. You see, it looks the same to me. Anyway, it's a, it's a nice picture in a low-key kind of way. There is some smoke in it. 
The match doesn't look very healthy. It looks, well, burned. I guess that's the point, is this is a smouldering match. Um, but beyond that, it lacks something. Um, yeah, I, d I don't really know quite how to put it. Um, my attention is not drawn to really much of anything in it, uh, least of all the smoke which appears to be defying gravity a little bit here and going up and down. But anyway, uh, it's, it's a good effort. It's a good idea. I'm not sure it worked out as well as it could have done. Lighting in, in smoke photography is really difficult. Uh, I favor flash. Um, in fact, you almost have to use flash uh, to, to freeze the, the motion of the smoke. But anyway, um, nice effort. And uh, we'll move right on. Actually, we'll move down to... Well, we can't go to the next one because it could be a winner. Uh, so um, let's instead go to the, by far, the most disturbing image uh, in the whole competition. Uh, this one leaves me cold, I would say, would be a good word. I know it's a beetle. It looks like a Pasilus beetle or a rhinoceros beetle that appears to be steaming or smoking or, um, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know why a beetle would do that unless you had just cooked it. And I just do hope that that is not what you have done. I don't like it. Um, don't much care for the picture of the beetle, which appears to be partially dismembered. And uh, the smoke is off-putting and scary. Yeah. I, th I think we should say little more about this and just move right on. Uh, indeed, we will do that. We'll go on to the next one, which is, um, oh, it's one of, our, one of our finalists. We can't talk about that. Um, here's one that was just one off the, the, the finalist thing. I love this picture. This is a very nice piece of work that is uh, actually multi-layered and, and quite, uh, quite complex uh, when you look at it for a while. It is steam rising off a roof. Now, it appears that it was photographed from the shadow side of the roof, uh, either with a very long lens or um, on a ladder or something. It appears that the sun is falling on the ridge of the roof and uh, down onto the right side from, from our vantage point of the, the uh, roof tiles. And that is generating heat and the moisture from the dew, I suppose, is rising in steam. That was my phone ringing and uh, you'll notice I didn't answer it. So the steam is rising in, in sheets and what's very interesting is the granular pattern. Now, I looked at this last night and uh, could not figure out whether I was seeing uh, dust particles and, and debris mixed in with the, the water vapor, or if I was actually seeing tiny uh, prismatic rainbows that were being made by this, uh, the light striking the bright side of the roof. I think it's the latter. When you zoom in, you can really see the, the streaks of color. So I think that what we're seeing here is just a, a very dainty, and delicate effect, not really a rainbow, actually, more just individual colors from the, the, the um, uh, surrounding area being reflected by the individual water drops in the bright sun. I love the shapes that are in here, especially this trumpet shape, beautiful capture, and uh, you could put just about any uh, of your imaginary beasts into this shape and, uh, and come up with something. I mean, it could be anything. So lovely, lovely picture. Very nearly a contender. Next up, from Alan. No, I'm Alan. <laughs> Next up from Amy. Uh, Amy Furman uh, is called Alan World, which is, uh, I guess, this world. This is the, the one I live in. Uh, so this is Alan World, and um, I'm not sure what it is, really, um, other than being some purple smoke, um, purple haze maybe. I don't know. I really don't know what it is. Um, 
it's very it's very attractive. It doesn't look like anything I see in my world, but uh, but there you go. It's it's smoke going in different directions. I like it. Not enough to, to make it a, um, a, a placed one, though. Not this time. But uh, there you go. I, there's, a, there's something hidden in this that I'm not seeing. Let's move on to the next one. The next one is uh, a contender, so it won't be mentioned. So we'll skip ahead to Phil Atkinson's Land of Fire, Steam and Ice. I don't know where that place is. Um, oh, Iceland. Okay, fair enough. And uh, this is a uh, photograph of boiling water. Oh, boiling water coming up out of the ground, I assume. Uh, uh, in fact, it is. It's a geyser. It's called the little geyser because it's small, macro, presumably. Yeah, this is, um, this is interesting. Uh, you know, it, it's the lack of, of focus in the context of the of the picture that is off-putting to me. I can't really tell what I'm looking at, which is always a sure sign I'm going to have a problem with it. All I see is a pair of spectacles there, but I mean, I'm not really sure if this is a hole in the ground or if this, this is a, 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 a pot full of water. It's kind of hard to tell. I'm not sure what this is. Land, I assume. But um, yeah, maybe I'm just not imaginative enough. But um, I wonder if I wonder if backing off might have made it a little more um, atmospheric. Yeah, you certainly wouldn't want to be any closer than this, or you'd get boiled to death. I think yeah, it, it, it's interesting. Didn't win a prize, not this time. Uh, but uh, thank you for submitting one and for going to Iceland to do it. I read your comment, and that was over and above but you're still not going to win, even if you did fly to Iceland in your private jet. But it is, um, it is an interesting picture. Let's move on. Next up, one that, oh my goodness, this was close to, to getting a prize. This is from uh, Daniel Stanifer, and it is called Dragon's Gate. And what it is, is a, it's a photograph of wax melting on a hot plate or a hot piece of iron, and the smoke that's coming off it in loops like, uh, like you see. And the one in particular is, of course, the loop at the bottom that's forming a gate. This is very nice, and it's very interesting, and I looked at it for a long time. There are compositional issues with it that I don't think you could have improved upon because of the fact that the smoke was a moving target. I love the colors in it. The contrasts, the the blues and the and the uh, reddish stone, and uh, the grey and the blue and the up in the air. It, it is nice. It's missing something, and I don't know what it is. Uh, but I don't like the the bottom. Um, that that is a shame. But I I see why you didn't crop it because that would have thrown the whole composition off balance. But a very successful photograph, and it almost was in the winning but not quite. Next up, I'm feeling like I'm being horribly mean to everybody today, but I don't really intend that. Uh, next up is a uh, contender, so I won't be able to talk about that. Uh, but um, let me see. Amy sent in a second one, and this, uh, this one I like. It's clever. It's called Over the Moon, and uh, kind of obvious, um, the, the title, because of the fact that the smoke, green though it is, is over the moon. Uh, I like this from a technical standpoint. It's a composite. It's not actual shot of the moon, which is always um, uh, tricky. Um, the, the, the smoke's in good, in good um, um, focus. It's a little dark um, and a little hard to see uh, in a bright room. But uh, I like the shapes and the, the, the coils and tubes that it appears to be making. All in all, it's successful. It just doesn't scream at me. It uh, doesn't tell a story that I'm interested in hearing. That sounded mean too, didn't it? That wasn't the way it was supposed to come out. It, it just, it lacks something. And uh, I can't put my finger on it, but uh, it was enough to make me move on to the next one, which I'm going to do now. We're going to be through with this in record time, aren't we? Next is a beautiful photograph, clever photograph. 
This uh, is from Angie, and I love this picture. This is very nice. It was done as a simulation of spore release using smoke. Uh, so smoke was placed somewhere underneath this mushroom and uh, released upwards, and the smoke's rolling out from underneath the uh, gills of the mushroom, just like a um, a spore uh, 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 sporulating mushroom would. Is that a word? No? Okay, all right. Well, it appears to be clouds of spores coming off, but it's smoke. So therefore, even though it's supposed to be spores, it's not. It's smoke. Therefore, it can be in a smoke competition. So well done, Angie. Very nice uh, picture. Very nice idea and concept. Now we're going to move on to the four finalists. And uh, we have three that are in third place. No, no, we don't. We have two that are in third place. I got the numbers mixed up. So let's go back to the first one of the two that's in third place. And that is from, believe it or not, a previous winner. This is from Pierre Soreau, photographer in the mist. Look at that, will you just? This was unexpected and unusual and clever. And I liked the colors. And as I zoomed in and looked further, I noticed there was a photographer in the mist, which is actually clever naming of this picture because it was like a little Easter egg. You have to figure it out first. He could have called it chandelier in the mist, but it wasn't in the mist. It's up above the mist. In fact, you can see his whole living room if you look closely. If you look close enough, you can look out the window and see the, the you know, this was the photographer that took the fantastic bubbles picture that I love so much. Yeah, this is another bubble, different kind, soap bubble this is. Apparently, this took him 10 minutes waiting for the smoke to settle or three minutes or two minutes, many minutes anyway, before he could photograph it and see the colors. But I think it's brilliant. Well done. Very nice job, third place. Congratulations, Pierre. Sharing third place uh, with um, with one of the more traditional smoke photographs that just, I, I, I wanted to show you this one anyway, because it absolutely um, shows you exactly what I would be looking for in a smoke picture. That's, that's the words I was looking for. So let me, let me show this to you. The name of it, as soon as I find it, is uh, Smoke Rising. Okay, not a particularly uh, uh, great name, but um, very nice picture. And it is the strange mirrored appearing symmetry of these two columns of smoke, or maybe they're the outside of a ring of smoke. I love the sinewy way they bend together and form this very biologic looking shape. Um, it, it's, it's beautiful. The, the composition is very pleasing. The way the smoke breaks up and layers out because he's hidden a plate of glass up here. That is clever too. And um, it's, very, it's very effective. It's very subtle. And you may look at that and say, well, there's no difference between that and the other smoke pictures, though. But there, there is. There is. It is the, the, the way he has caught these tendrils that make it so special. Very nice picture. Good third place. Uh, congratulations, Wilf. Uh, that was uh, well done. You. Number two. Second place. Well, this may or may not surprise you. I, I'll be honest. It didn't surprise me a great deal. Um, but it's, uh, it's very pleasing. This is from Angie. Um, and what can you say? She is just masterful at this kind of thing. And um, we'll see how she does at hardware next month. But uh, yeah, this is a mushroom that is once again, not really sporulating. Um, this is not spores. That's what I, I at first thought it was. But of course, the gills aren't open, so it couldn't be spores. So it must be smoke or steam. And uh, I like the way she's got it wrapping up and uh, uh, heading off. Uh, but what I really liked about it was the way that the other mushroom has a large smile on its face and is looking with both of its eyes at the rising smoke. This is very much an Angie touch and um, I love it. 
Uh, it's a it's a clever uh, little composition with a cool story in it, and it's well shot. It's pleasing to look at. It's a good picture. It's a, it's well worthy of second place. And this is not favoritism. I mean, uh, I I did know this was Angie's picture because you couldn't not know that just by looking at it. But uh, yeah, it's it's nice. Even the the moon or whatever that is looks good. So good job. That means if Angie didn't win, something pretty spectacular must have pipped it at the post. In first place, for the first time, I do believe, though I'd have to check my records, Daniel Sanifer wins with this amazing photograph, which I'll have to explain to you. It's called States of Matter. And it is quite genius, I think. It, it was done in the same way as his other photograph, which was putting wax on hot metal. But in this case, it was put on, I think, red hot steel. And the wax underwent some transitions of, of form in an instant. And what we see is a mixture of smoke and steam with liquid balls of wax shooting up into the air from the impact. And um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, there are, there, I think this is supposed to be, or this is so, the solid wax blob that was dropped on the, the plate. So you have solid liquid and gaseous wax all mixed in with the smoke from the fire. Uh, from the from the heated plate, what I love is these are uh, these ominous dark thunderheads down at the bottom that seem to give the whole thing a just a a phantasmagorical scope. Uh, it, it makes it look like some type of cataclysm, something you'd expect to see in a in a Hieronymus Bosch painting. Uh, and the the little smoke ring at the bottom is uh, is very cool too. But what makes it for me and what draws my attention fully into the picture are the blobs of liquid wax. They just completely make the picture. They make the gray look grayer. Uh, they make the dark gray look almost black. It's clever. It's beautifully composed, off-center. We've got uh, interesting elements that draw your, your gaze all the way around. But I... I, I Know that your your brain is going to go straight to the brightest thing in a picture, but mine didn't. My my brain, which admittedly uh, does not function completely normally, uh, went straight to these golden spots of color. And uh, yeah, this is a great picture. One of one of my uh, favorite uh, competition winners in a while. Uh, very very good job, Daniel. Congratulations. So. It was a, a smaller than usual competition, but uh, the, like I said at the beginning, these are great pictures from great photographers. I am so pleased that everybody uh, uh, did uh, show up and, and, and bring a picture this time. Next month, or this month actually, is November, uh, and the competition is stuff you would find in a hardware store. Now, you can interpret this, as always, any way you want, but I need it to be a macro photograph. The more macro, the more points you'll get in the is this a macro photograph category. At one to four, you're going to get the minimum number of points. I'll just say that. Above one to one, you all get the same number of points because then you're definitely macro. So don't make it too big a thing. Let me give you an example of, of something that would not be macro if you shot the whole thing, a bucket with a mop in it. That would not count. That would be maybe one to 10. Um, a riding lawnmower. They sell those at the hardware store here and no, much, much too big. A, um, a nut and bolt combination like that. Perfect. Can't use that now. I've already told you about it. And I'm going to be photographing that. So yeah, that, that's a good example. Um, let me give you another example. A dish of ice cream. Now, I heard that there is a, there is a, a store called Minards. I think that was what it was somewhere in Illinois or Idaho or Iowa or India. I can't remember. 
but they have hardware stores that sell ice cream. I think you're pushing your luck. If I see ice cream and they don't have it in my store, I probably will not give you points for that. So just warning. Make it something that I would look at and say, ah, that was from the hardware store. That's a, a good tip. So that's for November. You better get cracking on your pictures. And uh, I have a feeling that it's gonna be a big one, a big competition this time, because people love doing hardware store stuff and I love looking at it. And in December, as a special Christmas treat, it's gonna be wild card. We haven't done it in a year and uh, it's great fun. So you can be thinking about that too. Anything you want to photograph, so long as it's macro, can be entered. That's in December, don't get them mixed up. And, and well, I wouldn't know. As long as you do hardware this month, you're safe. I'm done and uh, congratulations again to Pierre, Wilf, Angie, and of course, Daniel Stanifer for his wonderful winning picture about matter. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next thing, which is probably at this rate gonna be a live stream a week from now. So until then, take care, stay safe and be well. Congratulations to the winners.